the statistics, a lot of you will recognize that word. A lot of you won't even realize that you actually know quite a great deal about this topic already. Statistics focuses mainly on something called data handling. Data handling involves all the little bits of maths that you've done that don't really tie up into the core stuff that I've referred to already. For example, calculating averages. There's a topic already in your S1 book that simply talks about working out the mean, the mode and the median. You should recognize those three words from your GCSE, as well as something new called standard deviations. Okay, standard deviations refers to the spread of data, opposed to the averages, the middle number. And the third section that comes up a great deal in statistics, especially in your S1 module, is probability. And I'd advise again, like I was referring to the summer between your year 12 and year 13, revising what you know, probability and calculating averages is something I would spend that little bit extra time over the summer holidays before your year 12 learning through again. It really does save you a lot of hassle when you're getting through the subject for the first time in year 12. In A-level mathematics, like I mentioned before, you'll only need to worry about two particular modules in the statistics, the S1 and the S2. Once again, if you were reading from earlier on, I told you that you had to do the first core, four core modules and select two extra applied modules after that. Now the decision what a lot of people use to make that decision is what they'll be doing when they get to university. And I generally advise students that if you're going to follow something that's based on sciences, so if you're going into biomedical sciences, chemistry, biology, if you're going to economics, business studies or medicine even, S1 and S2 are going to be extremely valuable to you. When you get into university, in particular, the content of S2 will show, will provide you with so much support, especially in your first year. And to do S2, you've got to complete S1 as well. So for those of you considering anything going along those lines in your higher education, I'd ask you to look at thinking about doing S1 and S2, even if they're a little bit more challenging for you. They will support you in the long run. Right, let's go on to the two sections that a lot of you will have no idea what they include. There's mechanics, and the other one is decision mathematics. Now, mechanics and decision both include, once again, two modules, M1 and M2, and respectively D1 and D2. M1 and M2 would be ideal for any student that's considering doing engineering, physics, or something along both of those lines at higher education. The modules focus on concepts such as acceleration, speed, distance, time graphs. They help you and the subject helps you to figure out equations that you can model different events across. So, for example, a projectile, when you throw a ball, how high is that ball as it moves across a pitch? We can actually calculate those distances using mathematics and you're introduced to those topics in M1 and M2. Another thing is center of mass, i.e., on a very obscure shape, exactly where is the middle of all of its mass acting upon. Vectors, which some of you, once again, depending on what GCSE modules you've done, will have met. So vectors involves discussing motion across a plane, across a two-dimensional field. You will not need to worry about vectors in three dimensions in M1 or M2. However, vectors does come up in C4, one of the core modules I mentioned to you earlier on, in three dimensions. And another two mo topics that do come up in mechanics are something called moments that some of you might have mentioned, and uh, might have met, sorry, in physics opposed to mathematics GCSE and Newton's laws of motion. Once again, some of you might have covered this in physics opposed to mathematics. As you start doing mathematics at a higher and higher level, a lot of you will realize that what you study in physics affects your mathematics just as much as what you've learned solely in mathematics. It's quite nice in a way because you start to appreciate exactly how valuable mathematics can be when you're learning lots of different subjects. When I was doing psychology at university, the mathematics I'd learned um, at year 12 and year 13, my A-level mathematics was one of the most valuable things I could have held on to. I was quite glad that I was actually so interested in it that it supported me. So I would strongly recommend a lot of you look into your university of subjects and decide how much 
of your A-level should be mirroring that to help you. The final section is something that's very new and only come, really come into A-level mathematics in the last decade. It's called decision mathematics. If you were to speak to your parents, most of them probably wouldn't have a clue what on earth it is because it's come along as computer science has become more and more important. As the internet's become more involved, as more things are handled by computers, decision mathematics has become a more and more valuable source of information for us. Decision mathematics is one of my favourite, mainly because it's completely different to the other three modules. It's one of those that, if you've got quite a logical mind, it's wonderful. If you follow rules very strictly, if you can appreciate how clear and precise you've got to be when giving decisions and decisions, and giving instructions, decision mathematics will be something you'll thoroughly enjoy. Once again, it's one of those modules that people take when they're considering studying computer science or something along those lines at university level. Many of the problems involved in decision mathematics involve something called optimization, i.e. finding the most efficient solution, the most efficient way of doing something. Now this isn't when you look at something yourself, how do you do it most efficiently? But what would you make a computer to do to ensure that an action is fulfilled in the most efficient manner? Hence, methods are applicable to real world situations. And here again, like I've mentioned before, there are two modules in decision mathematics. So those are the four main sections. What I would like to do, if you can give me a few minutes, is actually go through two examples for you. One will be in C1, in the core first module that you'll be learning when you first arrive into Year 12. And then I'm going to show you something from decision mathematics, which is quite simple, but it will allow you to appreciate how easy it is to learn decision mathematics if you follow rules and if you can remember instructions very clearly.